We use the black and white to represent the occupation in the world. And because just putting Nazis in a colorful Paris world, it just didn't feel right. Like they feel kind of out of place. So when an area has been inspired, it's color. And so what you'll see is we're at a resistance headquarters in Paris at a real park called the Bois de Boulogne. We have all the monuments and landmarks of Paris in there. It's a scaled down version of the map, but everything is there. And so, but it, everything's closer than it actually really is. So but that way, we, what our goal was is to really fill literally every block in the game with something to do. So what you can see though, is like these color and black and white areas exist side by side. We're a, an open world streaming sandbox game and you can literally go anywhere in the game. Sean has the ability to, to scale things and climb buildings and you can climb the Eiffel Tower even if you want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in Sean's car. This is his baby. We call it the, it's called the Aurora. And early in the game, you actually get to race this car. Sean's a, Sean's a race car driver turned saboteur, which is a ridiculous concept on paper, but it's actually inspired by a real person. And, and so we're like, wow, what a cool concept. Let's make a game based off of that. So what you'll see is he's driving now into the black and white world, the, what we call the low world of fight. And what will happen in the game is when you do these big missions, the color will then bleed back out into these areas. And you're not liberating areas, you're more inspiring the world. Because what will happen is, I mean, the Nazis are still in control. They're still the occupying force of France. And then uh, what will happen is you'll inspire the people and the resistance will actually join you in the streets fighting back against the Nazis. One of the things we really like to show here is, in our game we didn't want to have a very, like, we wanted to use our, like, a collections mechanic, but instead of it being very passive where you just walk over things, we wanted to use the mechanics of shooting, gunplay, and climbing, and sabotage. Um, so these things like the propaganda speakers that you see or the tanks, or there's a little tower off in the distance, those are all things you can interact with at any given point in the game, blow them up, shoot a general or something like that, and you're rewarded for doing so, and then it's gone forever. So it actually will show you how it actually has interplay even in the mission that we're playing right now. And then you'll see things, we want to make the Nazis really harsh, especially in the low world of fight areas. So you'll see things like harassments that'll turn into executions and just paint a really grim picture and make the bad guys the baddest the bad guys. I mean, they're already, Nazis, they're bad guys, so we hate them. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're really, we built Paris in a, instead of just normally building a bunch of buildings and stamping them down in the world, you get a lot of a repetition in there. And Paris is, you know, it's a very vibrant and like beautiful city and it has, everything has such like a personality and flavor. So we built our buildings out of like Lego pieces really. So we could swap them out and literally give every block and every everything you see kind of its own bit of personality to it so every block in the building is unique essentially in the game so Sean's got an objective here it's really simple he's got to blow up this giant cannon and they didn't really install this giant cannon in Paris we're I like to say we're more historically inspired you know and we're, we're kind of going for that big like Indiana Jones feeling it's more over the top we have things like zeppelins in our game which were decommissioned but they're cool, you yeah, know, and then so, fun. I mean, Medal of Honor, even, you know, the original one, they got away with some yeah, fictional you, stuff wrapped around it. Just, you make things a little more interesting that way and just kind of push it a little bit. So what he did here is he, he beat that Nazi up and he took his disguise. This is one of the ways you can get through the game is actually by stealing disguises. And um, kind of, we, we employ this concept that we call quiet in, loud out. So the idea is that it's better for the player to go in quietly and break a neck and wear a disguise. And then when the big objectives happen and you're having to flee, uh, to, to actually, like, that's when you're kind of run and shooting your way through Nazis or stealing cars. But one thing that's really fun to show with this mission is kind of showing how you can use the Parisian buildings as part of the combat and, and show the flamethrowers and things like that. So we really wanted to have a lot of different weapons, and the flamethrower is such a great piece of, like, iconography of the war. And we have a, a huge variety of weapons, all the classic, like, you know, World War II guns, but we're also not limited to just German weapons. We can get weapons from different parts of the world through our black market system. Color scheme, by the way, is super neat the way that works. <laughs> it really, it's something we've, and we've put a lot of care into making it feel right because we knew we wanted to do it, like I said, to sell the occupation and almost really beat the idea of the occupation over the head. But uh, it just, it makes you feel the mood of that world when you're inside of it. So what you can see is he can really use this environment to just go anywhere he wants. And Sean can climb literally anything. Like I said, the Eiffel Tower is, is something you can actually climb in the game. And So we're going to grab a sniper rifle here because this mission is it's almost a key tool to getting through this but this is it's a sandbox again like our whole world is a big streaming world you can go from germany to paris to a coastal town in france and it's all streaming and all these buildings are you know interactive and you can move around in the environment so
that's a that's a that's a lot of like and you can go in them and all that? Yeah, you can go well you can the buildings not most of the buildings you can't go in, but we do have some key locations, especially for some big set pieces. Sure. One of the things we really want to have is a bunch of set piece events in the game and do big over the top action events. So what you'll see here is like, again, you can approach this so many different ways. And I've watched Jared play this demo like 20 times and in probably this week alone. And, and it plays it literally different every time. But you'll see how we use the color to even just, just pull attention to something. Like, so that tower over there is what I was mentioning, those, the occupation of the world. You can go blow that up before the mission and that sniper is gone. So if you're having a hard time with this mission, you keep getting sniped in the back of the head. Just go into the area and when you're not in the mission, it's probably a little less occupied. Take it out and then go back into the mission and actually, you know, you're not getting, that sniper's gone forever. So you can see there's a, he's, he's got a bunch of different weapons. We're using some machine guns, there's pistols, shotguns, a bunch of different rifles, rocket launchers. And they all serve a different tactical purpose in the game. And we have some other weapons that we've made up, the kind of some fantasy weapons. Because, like I said, we're not historically accurate. We want to go that pulp kind of big over the top kind of game. But, uh, and, and I'm just curious, the, the character that you based on, he is real though, or he was at one point. He was inspired by somebody real. So there was a, a driver named William Grover Williams for the Bugatti racing team. And, and the idea of, uh, you know, he was, he was a Grand Prix champion. He was half English, half France, or French. And when he, uh, the war, the occupation happened, he fled for his life from, from France. And so he went back to England and was recruited by what they called the British SOE and reinserted because those guys were daredevils those cars were so not safe like they, they were so dangerous and, he, and that and he knew france and so he's this perfect candidate for like a, you know a, a daredevil saboteur he's gonna get hit with the rocket launcher if we're not careful here but uh so yeah we took that as inspiration and we changed a lot of things we really one of our focuses really early was making a story and separating ourselves from the war we didn't want to make a world war ii game in a way like like, Indiana Jones is in a World War II movie, but it's got Nazis, and they're great bad guys. So that's really where we started with everything in the game. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of questions piling up from our audience. Do you mind if I look toward them? Let me do that right now while you guys make your way through. Oh. <laughs> One of the things you can see that we're really happy with is we wanted to make the Nazis dangerous. And so, you know, so to make the player fear them and have really heavy combat situations. And we wanted to have a cover system, like everybody has cover systems, but we made our cover system purely dynamic. So like it always makes Sean look like an action hero when you just kind of move up behind cover, he'll just take cover naturally. And because our character is so nimble, we actually made it very fluid so you're not being like stuck inside of the cover. Hydraulic system of maximal capacitance. Cardo Peterson at Goodyear, Arizona, wants to know uh, the weapon set you have in there. We've seen the sniper rifle, we've seen grease gun. What, what else you guys got in there? So, like, there's, 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 there's pistols, there's machine guns, there's rifles, sniper rifles, uh, shotguns. They weren't commonly used in the war, but we definitely wanted them because they're a great piece of combat. Uh, the rocket launchers, which actually we'll probably grab one at the end of this demo. There's also different types of sabotage weapons, a uh, couple different types. You'll see one of them right here, which is a a fictional like remote detonation device. Yeah. We wanted that like classic plunger kind of fantasy, but the reality is they had to lay wires and it was really boring. It'd be such a <laughs> tedious mechanic. So we kind of took a made a remote detonation device that kind of combined that idea together. So he's going to blow up his big objective here, and you'll see basically the kind of the high concept of what happens with the will to fight. Nice. And so now you'll see the color will then bleed back out into the world. And so what'll happen oh. is the people will start returning to almost like their pre-war lives. And they'll, they'll, they'll be out on the streets more, the farmer's markets will be open. And like I said, the real key to that becomes the resistance. And so you drag Nazis into those areas, have shootouts, the resistance will start popping out and fighting alongside you. Now, my question is, uh, that just seems like it seems like it seems like awesome. Like, what happens now in this area now that you've completed that mission? You, you say that those people come out. What, what do I get any kind of mission types out of that area anymore? Or is that done? So, no, there's still one of the things that will happen is still uh, some of the things still exist, like the towers and stuff that I was talking about. Like, there's one over on your right. Oh, actually, here's something we always like to do. <laughs> You know, we wanted to have the Zeppelins because they're such a great fantasy piece, you know. Yeah. But, uh, and we definitely wanted to shoot them down. We use them like helicopters in our game. They'll, 
When you piss the Nazis off enough, they'll come around, flying around with guns and searchlights and drill on you. I've got a question from Emmett Pondo out of Israel. He wants to know, how many mission types will there be? Uh, will they be distinctly different from each other? Actually, I mean, it's tough to really say of different mission types. Like, all of our missions are different, essentially. Our, everything's really story-centric in our game, and so there's a main story arc of Sean's vengeance quest throughout the story that is kind of serves as the backbone, and it branches a, little, a few times. And then along there, there's one of our mantras was everybody has a problem in this world. Every character in the game has a developed kind of backstory and a reason why they're in this world. And so you'll meet resistance members that have their own problems, and Sean can choose to help them or not. And then in between there is that whole occupation layer to fight as well. So there's literally something to do pretty much all the time in the game. Nice. We have time for more. Um,